Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. We're here, and we're back at it, and we're going to get on into it. But before we do, as always, make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. Now let's go ahead and get on into it. Here is today's guest. Hey, uh, I'm Zeno G. Nice to meet you all. Hello. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about, you know, like where you're from, what you do musically and things like that, and just let us get to know you a little bit more. Yeah, um, so I'm from Nigeria, Lagos. Um, my name is Gideon, Gideon God's Power. Um, I'm a robotics engineer, um, and I make music pretty much. Hell yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. And uh, what got you into music originally? Um, I've always, you know, I've always made music. I've always, it's always been my lineage. My sister make, makes music. Um, so I was, since I was a kid, I've always been so, I'd say, intertwined when it, like, with music that, um, you know, it just always came so natural to me. And, like, you know, when I was a kid, I'd learn, I'd become very obsessive about learning, you know, my favorite artists, music, mm-hmm. you know, just constantly, if I don't get it exactly like the way they did, right? I mean, I'm rapping very fast. I mean, I get mad that I can't, I can't get it. And until I get it, I won't, I won't stop. Okay. And that was like the foundation of me even before even starting to even like make my own, you know, my own stuff. And, um, yeah. So when I was there, like 14, 15, um, I made my actual, my official first song Mm -hmm. and uh, that was like that was amazing. It was an amazing process. My first time in actual studio, the experience and the, everything was was it was beautiful. I wasn't actually I was in Vietnam when I did that. Um, so oh, damn, yeah, hell yeah. And uh, do you play any instruments? Yeah, I play uh, drums. I play um, a little bit of a, a piano on my way around. You know that a little bit. So oh, hell yeah. And uh, now this next question is uh, it's one we asked kind of early on. It's a fun one. It's definitely a crowd favorite. What was the first album you ever bought with your own money? Hmm. Um, I say whiskey. Whiskey. Okay. I think well, I'll say whiskey that, that I can remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Best. Whiskey is the Afrobeat artist. So. Nice. Yeah, I'm I'm familiar with the name. I can't yeah. think of a. Blanking on a song offhand, but I'm familiar <laughs> yeah. with the name. Yeah. And then, what was the first show you ever went to? That was like you know, like a show you wanted Concert, to go to. Um, yeah. I haven't actually um, gone to oh any shows that like I haven't really I'm I don't know I I, I I've not really had opportunities to go to concerts and That's festivals fair. and stuff like that. I haven't really ex- had that whole experience. Like I can't really pinpoints one time that I I've, I've gone to shows but not like you know well what's like what what was even like even if it was a smaller show what was like the first show that you went to mm-hmm. I really never I don't, I don't remember okay. <laughs> well you you got a lot going on I could totally see that yeah. now um before we get into more of like you kind of like as the the artists, the things you're doing currently and the stuff that makes you you now, do you think there was a defining moment where you like decided you wanted to do music full time? Like where it went from just like something you love to do kind of as like a level of passion and to like where it is now? Yeah, um, you know, for the longest I've always felt like, you know, I'm, I'm obsessed with perspectives and, and I've always felt like um, the old world would would be much, way much better if perspective was is a better way to express perspectives I guess because everybody's perspective some people even you know two, two people could be having an argument and their perspective is the same but they don't know from because of how they're from the point of view they are both standing in so yeah. it's like I've always had that misunderstanding when people, people would hear me or me not be able to communicate as well as I would want to maybe my accent or maybe my not really good with the words or something like that, and people just, I guess, not understanding me. So, mute the when I f- 
defined like when it really became def- a, like a, a set thing in my life was when I realized like I guess I psychoanalyzed myself and thought like I needed to bring people into me mm-hmm. into my own world instead of trying to be them and the, the minute that you know I I realized that that was it you know it was like okay now I start making creating my own world with my own music my own concept my own it's me the people mm. come to see me and that was like that was the reality of like that's what an artist is so that was when I you know set you know snapped my foot in the ground I was like alright I'm pushing I'm pushing for this so. man that's a really insightful way to look at it yeah. really powerful yeah. alright now let's dive into uh, let's dive into you as the artist now I'm excited for these yeah. uh, we're gonna get the easy one out of the way how did you pick your name? Um, funny enough I knew I don't know if I really I see. I guess I picked it, but when I I was just playing around with, with names and X um, is my like one of my favorite artists of all time. So and I was like uh, trying to like figure out a name. Actually, I was I used to go by you know Eclipse and <laughs> and then I I was like nah, I'm not going by Eclipse. I changed that and I I was like playing around with names and I'm trying to play with like the, the letter X and mm-hmm. it was like and just had Zeno G because my name is Gideon you know Gideon oh, Godsmo okay. G G and it was like Zeno 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 G and I said it one day to my friends and praise God uh, it was one of my friends in Vietnam and he was like yeah Zeno G and he just it, it just stuck and everybody just started calling me Zeno G and then I came when I came to the US everybody I'll, I just said it once and they're like all right Zeno G <laughs> and he just stuck so I was like hey. This is my artist name. Hey, I that can't, works. Can't change it. Yep. Sometimes the names just kind of show up. You know yeah, what I mean. Sometimes yeah, you don't really get to pick them. Because I keep, you know, trying to like think about what made what, what, what the, you know, the, the yeah. idea behind me saying putting the Zeno jeans is like, yeah, it just played around with words. Said it, said it once, stuck, and yep. hey, it was it. So hey, that's like I said. Sometimes that's just how it goes. <laughs> yeah. If it wor- if it works, it works. Right. I think if it's if it's easy to spell and it's easy to remember, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. If you want to change names, I feel like sometimes that can like divert from the process. Yeah. But like if it's not if it's not the message, don't you know, don't keep it. But yeah. I think if you land on one that's easy to remember and like comfortable, why not? Yeah. And I mean, yeah, if it works, it works. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Now tell us a little bit about your writing process. Because I mean, you were t- so thoughtful on how you decided you wanted to do music. I can only imagine the thought processes behind putting a track together. Yeah. And specifically focus on what do you do to start a song and what decides that a song is finished? So my first process when it comes to like writing at all completely, whether it's writing a beat from scratch, you know, with the lyrics and everything is like melodies. Mm-hmm. You know, is everything, I see melodies and I see kind of like, like I see them in front of me and, and I just like pin them, just put them together and mm-hmm. like, that's all. Like all my friends always tell me that, like, oh, when I hear something, I just he that like just connect the, the the beat or the tune of the of the music. Mm-hmm. So whether it's like a beat from scratch or anything, I have to make the melodies in my head. Even I'm playing a piano or, or whatever sound I'm, I'm going with reading, I'll make that in my head. Like mm-hmm. I just create that in my head first before you know doing any out. If I'm making a flow for a rap song or even a Afrobeat, R&B, pop, whatever genre I'm going into I I guess my brain's already tapped into the foundations of that genre mm-hmm. because I've listened I listen to a lot of music so it's like when I know okay this is what I want to tag it yeah. just go into my like it's like a library you know my brain's like a library and just go pull that out and oh we need R&B alright R&B cassette play <laughs> it's just, you know it's like yeah like a robot basically and it's just I just instantly start thinking of the flows that match that vibe of the song and it just comes like smooth like, like literally smooth I don't know how I do it honestly because I hey. do it and I record myself I've recorded myself multiple times and I just try to like sh- try to study myself and analyze myself <laughs> on how I do it because I do it so much I do it in public freestyles and do everything like that I do it in, when I'm in private and I just I, I can't get it but you know, I, I, I just know that it just comes that easy and it just works. And after I put the flow, I put in the, the lyrics. 
And then so it's always flow first. I don't care what I'm saying. It could be saying like literally the dumb, dumbest, you know, thing that I'm literally going to just say because I don't care about that at the moment. It's like always like a step by step process. And then I put the lyrics in. Sometimes I could be making the flow and the lyrics just come up with like, you know, yep. it could be that one thing where you're making a hook and you just, yep. oh, that's it. And you just <laughs> let it, you know, let it go, let it stay like that. So yeah, and then I put the lyrics and then. Um, after putting um, actually right before I put the lyrics I kind of analyzed the structure of the song mm -hmm. and I put the lyrics because like when I mean analyze the structure I mean like know what I want do yeah. I want it to have a hook or do I want it to have two hooks three hooks do I want it to have one verse three verse how is this playing out you know yeah. analyzing the structure and creating the structure for what I'm going for and then I put the lyrics and then um, record it hear it a few times um, I already have like a like my designated uh vocal effect that I use mm -hmm. basically that you know I already yeah, know what's your sound me. basically yeah my sound my style so you know play with put that on and you know some music is done perfect <laughs> yeah. do you uh do you send out for mastering and things like that or do you do yeah. it all in house yeah oh yeah I um I go to the studios of uh, sometimes um, well most most of the time right now actually I do go to the studio mm -hmm. um I have uh, a few producers that will send me beats as well um I have I also make beats as well with you know mm -hmm. some producers with them there and uh, yeah I, I don't try to like limit myself in any opportunity I get when it comes to making music you just take it and it's yep. just like no matter what just do it again I can make it like can make music so quick so it's like it's not even a problem at all so no I totally understand yeah. now I kind of wanted to touch on this earlier, but I wanted to wait till l later on in the interview, because um, you, you mentioned how the your your process for like how you come up with music, you just kind of like pull it out of your head and you like put it on. Yeah. Um, do you find that because you 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 have a pretty strong understanding in robotics and things like that, and you're fairly accomplished in that? That's kind of one of your main things as well. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that, and if there's any like ways of doing things from that that you've translated over to music? Um. Yeah, I mean, I th believe everything in life is math, mm -hmm. which is um, crazy. People would say it's crazy. Well, I sure to say. hope not, because I'm bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm kidding. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, from even English in comp in comprises of math, like everything like has math in it. Mm -hmm. In life, math takes you the farthest, I believe, and like every, I, I see everything in numbers, I guess. So even even music, you get, you see that in kind of numbers, and mm -hmm. I, that's kind of how my robotics was able to translate into it. Because I love math, I love physics a lot, and um, which is which is very interesting because physics is very as a, a a big part in production. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's resonance, acoustic, acoustic. Yep. You know, we we have that physics and, and sound is like this. You know, the study of sound is mostly incorporated in physics. So. Mm -hmm. Playing with that, knowing that um, how we sound wavelengths, uh, you know, play playing parts with um, with music translates easily to me creating you know, the best sound. Whether it comes to vocal effect, reverbs, echoes, whatever I want to sound like, mm -hmm. whatever. Also, me knowing what what I want, like you know, like when I go to, like LA in my recording days, when I would go to the studio. I didn't really know, oh, I want this effect, I want that effect, I want this effect, but me knowing, okay, this is what this effect does, because from the physics foundation of it, I could easily translate that, tell the, the, the uh, engineer, like, oh, I want uh, a reverb that has this, this, that, mm -hmm. with negative DBDs or whatever, you know, I could easily do that because I already have knowledge of all that stuff. You know, I also have knowledge of the units, you know, yeah. which is very important. And then, also, like my brain being like when you're having an engineering brain, you're so I guess obsessive a little bit. At the same time, um, metic not is it meticulous the mm -hmm. word? Um, so it's like that plays a huge role in my music, making sure perf I guess perfection. Because because when you make a product, you know you you can't put out a bad product because you, you know you you're in for a lawsuit or something like that. Yeah. You know, you, there's a lot of things parameters like um, there's a PFMEA, you got to go DFMEA, it's like, like design um, analysis that you kind of break down when you're making a, pro a robotic or device or electronic device or anything like that. So it's like it's so much calm down stages you got to like, you know, yeah. take and and so you don't rush things like that and because you're playing with like advanced technology and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. that helped me 
in music it would create patience, it helps me calm down, it helps me um, process things faster. Mm-hmm. Also, because I could, I guess, do math a lot fast, so I could also maybe create, come up with things on the spot faster too, because mm-hmm. it's all an exercise of your brain, you know? Yeah. So. Now, do you uh, do you read music? Um, not very well. Okay. Um, um, uh, I, I, I took music class, which makes me like I have a foundation of it, but I'm gotcha. not like I didn't push it. Just not something you utilize. Not really. Yeah, because yeah, I just see it in front of me, so it's just like I don't like oh, having to like go into the math math of it all. You know, no, totally. Which is like I would I'll be interested in doing that. You know, sometime when I have time and I'm programming robots or something. So <laughs> no, definitely. Now I kind of want to. I know we're supposed to be moving towards music more, but I want to run kind of towards the robots a little bit oh, more, yeah. just a little bit more. Can you tell us like? What got you? Can you tell us that story a little bit? Because at the very beginning, you also mentioned, I believe, that you uh, spent some time in Vietnam as well. Can you just kind of tell us the story of where it brought you and how it brought you there? Yeah, you know, I've always, because as a kid, I've always wanted to like be an engineer. That's also a fact. And even like kids, I'll be like, oh, I want to be a rapper. I want to be this when I grow up. I want to be a basketball player, soccer player. Mine was, I want to be an engineer, which is weird. Like, who would be like, what? You kid, you should I, want I, to uh, be, you know? I wanted like to that. be a paleontologist. <laughs> yeah. You see, like, he's like, like, people were like so shocked. Like, you kid, you should aspire to be, you know, all those cool things, I guess. That, yeah, I mean, robots are cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, engineer is cool. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's like. Yeah, but it's not like the cool thing for yeah, kids to And want. especially back then, there was no robotics field. When I was oh, a kid, it was just. Mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, I guess. Yeah. The, the combination of it all was not yet really like established. The whole concept of it, like we, all, we had other understanding of robots, but it wasn't like the curriculum wasn't really made in schools and universities yeah. like that, you know. So, so it's a fairly m- new major, if you think mm-hmm. about it, because it's not really, it's one of the newest majors they added in the curriculum. So, so like that, when I was a kid, it wasn't yet in people's heads. So people were like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I would even tell my mom, like, I want to do, I want, uh, she asked me, what do you want to, what kind of engineer you want to be? I'd be like, mm-hmm. I want to be a mechanical engineer. No, I want to be an electrical engineer. No, I want to be a software engineer. No, I want to be a uh, design engineer. I'm like, pick one. You got to pick one. I'm like, all right, well, I want to be all. It's like, you can't be all. It doesn't work like that. You want to go to school for years? I'm like, nah, I believe that, like, they, they will make one for me. And this was me. It was a kid. Like, yep. I, I, didn't, I didn't know anything. I just kept saying things like that. And, you know, right before I took my, uh, my um, exams like my SAT equivalent mm-hmm. um, when I was 14 oh damn so when I when I took that I was like always like I always had like uh, my mom my mom was like are you sure you want to do this you want to do this I'm like yeah yeah I want to do it cause I, I, I had like faith in myself that I could easily clear it and when I passed that you know, my mom was like surprised and she's like, oh wow, okay. And I, then I got a scholarship to study in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went, uh, even before I, before that, the major was not yet made yet. And then after I passed my um, SATs, basically equivalent, and then the, I started hearing like reading articles because I was online, there's this new major called mechatronics. Mm. And um, this was, I was like, what is mechatronics? So I, I Googled it, checked it. It's like, it's like the definition of it. It's mechanical, electronics, and software engineering oh, to form, like, to build robots, basically. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and then I told my mom, she's like, oh, okay. This is what you want to do. I'm like, yeah. And it's just a four-year degree. It's not even like a, that much degree. They, they're yeah. able to like put everything in one, even though it's a lot of coursework, but you could do it in four years and everything like that. And she's like, oh, okay. So I went to Vietnam to do it with mechatronics and robotics. And that's when I got got a scholarship to study there. And then that was where I, that's kind of where my music career actually kind mm-hmm. of started. So Yeah, I was just about to ask, because you said you put out your first track when you were like 14, 15. Yeah. Or 15, 16. And yeah. that's, you would you would have been in Vietnam at the time. So yeah. how did how did that happen then? What 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 brought that to be? So, so I was like, you know, I was a foreign, in a foreign land, like I'd, uh, they don't speak English they speak Vietnamese there mm-hmm. um, so I had to learn the language to kind of you know communicate even the, my schooling was you know a little bit Vietnamese and everything mm-hmm. like that so um, I had to adapt quick and I'm, I'm always very good very good at adapting I guess so I had to adapt quick adapt to the culture and I saw how I guess it was the first time I experienced freedom mm-hmm. well because I was two, I was a kid I was 14 you know, like a fourteen-year-old kid experiencing like total freedom. I'm literally in a foreign land that's over twenty hours away from 
flights. Yeah. They took two hours flight away from home, you know, from my mom, from anybody, you mm -hmm. know. So I'm literally free, literally. So yeah. it's like, all right, I could really do what I want to do. And I've always, I've also like always been to software engineering mm -hmm. and like programming in general from, like, just love programming a lot, like apps and games and stuff like that. So I, I was always, I was doing that first and then I was like, for then I started like getting to music and this, this, I had a roommate who used to make beats mm -hmm. and he put me on and he would see uh, me, he'd, yep. he'd, he'd make a beat on the spot why is he making it I'm freestyling ah. to it and he's like bro what are you and he's like you're not saying anything yet I want to keep, I want to keep hearing you <laughs> say, keep say, hearing say, you say, say nothing, nothing. Yeah. yeah and and that was when I was like huh? <laughs> okay so I went into like you know my other roommate was a um also like a producer kind of and he used to play piano and we started like working together like trying to get melodies and everything like this that's, that's kind of how I made my first song okay and then you know from there on it was just you know hell yeah from that music, it, was, music, this, music. it was history yeah. <laughs> it was history and even though I took like a, a long wait before even making music again after I made my first song uh, so okay. I came to the US afterwards and this school I wanted to I wanted to like you know I also had this thought like what if I blow up now would I just drop out and for my robotics that yeah. I always wanted to do since I was a kid and I'm like, nah, I'm finishing. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this. <laughs> I'm seeing this through. I'm, I'm completing my degree, and oh, I love that. I, I did. That's a, that's know. a really smart way to do it. Yeah, that's a really smart way to do it. Cause like, your degree is gonna. Do, what? How many more years do you have? Are you almost done? My degree? Are you done? Done? Oh, I'm done. Done. Oh, you're oh, done. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Done, yeah sorry. Completely. So yeah. then, <laughs> you, like, yeah, because it only would have been four years. So like, if you had like jumped on mm -hmm. it sooner, cut out in the middle, like who knows when you would have had the time for mm -hmm. the other two. Yeah. So that I mean, I, that's a really mature way to look at it. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I seen. And even when I transferred, because I transferred from Vietnam to the U.S. and it, it took me back a little, a little because they had it when you transfer school, they had more courses and they added a few more months to my time. Oh uh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. That's yeah, how it always goes. I, wanted. I was gonna finish quicker. Like, yeah. but it is what it is. So I mean, I, you know, I, I got to finish here, and um, things was much easier. My mom lives in San Francisco. My sister lives oh, in San perfect. Francisco. So I was like, I'm close to family. Yeah. You know? So I was like, all right, I'm just transfer it away. So now, did you spend any time with them down in California, or did you move straight up to here? Yeah, I stayed in California for a few months before. Okay. And I just like visit, like doing breaks, like you know, winter breaks and stuff like that. Yeah. Summer breaks. So yeah, I I, I did. Um, but most 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 of my time here has been in you know in school, which is in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, basically. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's let's reel back into some okay. more, some more <laughs> of the music stuff. Um, you have a fair amount of songs out now. Mm -hmm. Out of your entire discography, which song do you think represents you best as an artist? Joe's Illusion. Okay. Joe's Illusion, because it's. You know, I've always struggled with the, the the thought of where I wanted to go with music and, and having like being like you know where when a time where everybody wants to put you in the box and and you know they see one thing blows up or oh, that's what you should stick to because your fan base is gonna leave if you do something weirdly different now because yeah. now that doesn't, that doesn't that's not what they fell in love with you with with you for for so like i always had it in the back of my mind so like okay i'm gonna start doing just different things from the beginning so you know if you're a fan of me your friend you know who i've been from the beginning yeah it's not like i just flip you know i'm doing afrobeat once i blow up two years later I'm not doing hip hop trap or something like ah oh, now he's doing it because he wants to appease this audience and stuff yeah. like no this is just me that's why I kept saying like I, I I just I when I got when I set my foot down like, I wanted to get into music was like I, when I realized I want to get you into me mm -hmm. not me into you so it's like that was like the whole like my whole um, thought process of it all of that whole thing like that so hell yeah hell yeah I could dig that now um I know you just recently put out a music video not not too many weeks ago. I think it was a couple of weeks now. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind the video and what brought you to put it together and how it's doing now? Yeah. Um, so, like, even tying back to what the last question was, is Joe's Illusion? Because Joe's Illusion is like a combination of hip hop, um, trap, and Afrobeats. Mm -hmm. and like, with the transition, the center, it's it's like 
it's Zeno. That's Zeno G music. Mm. That's who I am. Yeah. Because I've not seen anybody do it before. I've not seen anyone mix that before. I've always seen like maybe Afrobeat artists play on a hip hop trap or a trap artists play on an Afrobeat tra- track, mm-hmm. you know, but the combination of it all together and it's smooth, like, you know, transitioning like so smoothly and the storyline of what I was even telling with that music is like, just speaks to me kind of, like differently. So I was like, I need to follow that up with my my music video and because I want my music video to also represent the same thing like the music is standing for, which is, I'm an African guy, I'm an, a Nigerian guy. Um, I love making music, period. Whether it's, whatever genre it is, I love making music. So it's like, I wanted to combine, it, combine that whole idea of, if you see the way the skit starts with an African guy, um, African guy coming, having a conversation with another African guy and it's like, um, they're having this whole a little argument and then he transitions into the music and then he ends, ends again with the same people from the beginning and tying a whole storyline to that. And over the, the people that I even, like the, the, the scene where I acted as myself with myself is like me trying to, it's like, the, it's like very rela- relative to me because of times where I have, well, you know, I want to like, because I want to do something, my other stuff is telling me, no, don't do that, don't do that. And, and sometimes, you know, it's the other way around, whatever. It's like that old, I think everybody probably goes through that. It's like you're having a, 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 a conversation, an argument with yourself, mm-hmm. which is like, well, I was trying to depict there, and mm-hmm. which is one of the barriers that I encountered when I was even making a video because I was like, I didn't want to do it. And like, because I didn't want to do it, I did it. Yeah. Because it's like, um, I was always having like, no, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. So I, then I was like, ah, right, you know what? I'm just gonna create this whole concept of this, mm. and that's why I use myself as an actor instead of someone else, like uh, acting to myself okay. multiple times. So it's, it's that I was doing like, and even the skit, I was trying to recreate a, a very popular African uh, movie, Nigerian movie skit. Very, mm. very hilarious. It's amazing. <laughs> but we, I suggest people to go check it out. It's called Get Out of Here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Now. I know you just recently played a show as well, mm-hmm. and it sounds like it went pretty well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, yeah it was on Friday, the merge. Um, it was it was amazing. Um, the crowd was amazing. Like it's, they never seen me before. You know, it's like my first. Like, I'm you know fairly new here in Portland, so it was like when they when I got the, got on the stage. You know, he, crazy crazy thing. I was very very anxious before that. You know, it was very. I've done. I've performed a lot, <laughs> but. That I was just that day specifically, and I was experiencing like this anxiety. I was like, I didn't, I couldn't understand why. Yeah, just shaking and like. Oh. Sometimes there's just that energy. Yeah, you know? I guess, I guess, because maybe the crowd was just giving. Because I'd seen other people perform, and I'm like, okay, it's my turn, my turn now. And man, I got the mic, and it was over. It was all different. I guess that's why I guess I'm playing with multiple personalities. Maybe I had multiple personalities, so a different uh, <laughs> different person took over or something like that because yeah. he wasn't the person before that was very, very anxious. It's just different. The energy was just great. The crowd bounced back, the feedback. You know, it, the, I think, you know, when artists say, like, you know, there's nothing like performing in life, you know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's different. Like, when you're in the studio making music and you finally make something beautiful, it's obviously an amazing feeling, but when you now test that out, because I perform very, I perform most of the songs I perform those unreleased music mm-hmm. that oh, I've, okay. I've been in the studio, you know, making, trying to make it this, this, tweak this, tweak that, you know, not knowing, like, yeah, it sounds good to me, but not knowing how it's going to sound good, like, to the world in general. Yeah. Having to do that and I test that out, the music is not even out and they're just crazy about it and they're all, like, I'm like, yo, this is not even out yet, you know, this is, imagine when it comes out. Yeah, it's, that's wild. It's crazy, yeah, so that feeling is, can't buy that feeling. There's definitely something different so, about like going and and you you kind of nailed it. How there is, it's almost like becoming a different person the yeah. second you get out on the stage. Yeah. Like you just you could be nervous all the way up until that first that very first note hits, yeah. and then it just it's like a light switch. It yeah. just switches, and suddenly you're like, wait, not only do I remember everything, yeah. I remember how to move. I'm Energy. projecting yeah. more than I've ever projected. Yeah. Like there there's something so powerful in that instant. The music starts, yes, yes. and the, and the afterwards, that after feeling, like <laughs> you could be nervous all day, and that afterwards feeling will make you feel like that was weeks ago. Yes, 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 because it's it's so rewarding. Mm-hmm. The feeling is so rewarding. You're like it's okay, exhilarating. It's exhilarating. Yeah, it's like being on a roller coaster, but yes. but cooler. Yeah, you're getting high health performance. Basically. Exactly, exactly. All right, 
Now we're going to go ahead and transition on to some hypothetical questions. Okay. This is where we're, we're going to have some fun with these. All right. And the first one, definitely, definitely one of the more fun ones. If you could work with any one artist that's currently alive, and if it's a group, you have to pick a single person from the group, who would it be and how would you want to work with them? Oh, right now, right now, Travis Scott. Okay, and and my dean I guess together because they're on the production side, but yeah, right now Travis got okay. Yeah, I could dig that. Yeah, I want to create like, I want to create some some new with come like Afrobeat infused Travis Scott sound. Oh, that'd be dope. Yeah, that'd be rad. Yeah, and then subsequently, who's a local artist that you're like aware of? You like know they're there, but you haven't had a chance to connect with yet. That you would like to work with? Um, I've seen, I guess, because I have talked, I've met a few of them already. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't really, um, I've talked to them, even the ones I want to talk to, work with, I've already like oh, okay. planned like some features that will. Who are uh, who are some people you might want to be working with in the, in the near future then? Um, I'm working, you know, easy. You know, I would mm-hmm. like to work easy. Um, I'd like to work with um, even Victoria. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I'd like to work with um, um, I say Swigu, Swigu, uh, mm-hmm. Swigu Mandela. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. I say his performance before, it was like amazing. So yeah. It was very, 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 very amazing. So. Those are three really solid artists to be working with, too. Definitely solid choices. Um, Now, this one's kind of a, this one's more of like a situational one. If you could perform anywhere in the entire world and you wouldn't be limited to like power, you wouldn't be limited to crowd access, you wouldn't be limited to building stability, any of that. But if you could perform anywhere in the world, where would you want to perform? The moon. Oh, damn it. Somebody else already said the moon. Sound doesn't travel in space. It doesn't, but we can create one uh, a medium that does. Holy shit, that's the coolest answer I've ever heard. I mean, it, we can, it, sound travels in the spaceship, doesn't it? Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay. Sound bars could be the kill. Hmm. All right. I think somebody just defunct the moon's not an option <laughs> question or answer. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. There you go. Official first person to perform on the moon, everybody. <laughs> it's happening. Yo, get your, get your ticket. <laughs> get, get your tickets now. It will not be called the Titanic. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Now, this, this next one's a little bit headier. But if you had to pick a completely different genre than any genre you've ever performed before, so if you had to do something completely different, but you would be equally as proficient as you are in your main one now, what would you move to? I would like to create a genre called Afro metal. I've never played. I've I've, 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 I've very, very um. Like I've, I've, I'm very infatuated with the concept of metal. I don't really get it yet. I've been studying recently, and and just like just the thought of fusing because I love fusing things with Afro beat. So fusing, I've not seen that before. That's completely new. That'll be completely a whole new invention. Yeah, that. So, like, Afro Meadow would just be mad and imagine that. That'd be great. Oh, oh my God, that would be incredible. Yeah. That would be so rad. Yeah, it literally. Because the drums already in Afro Beats is crazy, and then you yeah. find a way to fuse that, you know. Uh, yeah. The Meadows is, yeah, I can't even imagine that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> any... Any drummers out there, comment on this ch- comment on this episode, yeah. and let's let's make that happen. That would be that would be dope. Let's, let's okay, do okay, two it. for two on wild answers. Way to go! <laughs> but we are now going to start wrapping things up. So why don't you go ahead and tell people uh, what you have coming up next? Say like end of August and onward. I have uh, you know my my mixtape tunes for you dropping soon. So look out for that. You know, look out for like you know a lot of signs and you know believing some. Little symbols and signs. Okay. As, 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 the, as the time progresses, um, also Those Easter eggs. Yeah, Easter yeah. eggs. Yep. And um, I'll be dropping like a trailer video. I plan to do a trailer video for it. So look out for that. Um, also, like working on some merch. 
So like, oh, you know, okay, look out for that too. Okay, um, I've been drawing a lot. So it's, this is all designed and drawn by yours truly. Oh, dope. So I'm not like, getting someone to do it. I'm doing it from you know myself. So I love that. Um, because it kind of like my merch or my merch tie into my life mm-hmm. story. I've lived in different places, you know, you know, a lot and I've traveled a lot to different spots and yeah, seen a lot of different art. A lot of different things exactly. Mm-hmm. So I want to come incorporating my whole experience and that's kinda of why I make music all around because I've done so much, you know, variety of things. So Yeah, really like worldwide view of it. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, and then for this next one, go ahead and look straight at the camera and just tell people how they can connect with you, your at your plugs, things like that. Yeah, my uh, my name is Zeno G X E N O G E E on all platforms. Um, my Instagram same X E N O underscore G E E. Um, all platforms, Zeno YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, same thing. Um, what other? There's so much like platforms. <laughs> I'm trying to think about. I think Twitter. Uh, I don't even know my Twitter. Something something X, I guess. <laughs> Hell, yeah. Hell yeah! And then any other uh, any other plugs, any other shout outs, anybody else you want to put on while you're on here? Yeah, um, one shout out to my friend Josh, uh, Josh Mali is his name. He's an amazing artist. Uh, one shout out to my friend Malik as well. Um, I want to shout out to my friend Easy. Um, he's an amazing person. Um, I want to shout out to my manager, Carissa. She's oh, yeah, she, she, Carissa. She, yeah, she got my back. She's a, she's a superhero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hell, yeah. All right, and then we've got one last question to go. But before we do, I'm going to steal the camera for just a second. Okay. As always, y'all, please make sure to like, subscribe, push all the buttons, do all the things. You know, I don't know where they are, but you do, and I trust you. And now for the final question. What is your guilty pleasure song? Um, oh, that's a good one. Dum 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 dum. Oh, is that Crazy Frog? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, who's Crazy Frog by? <laughs> I, I should know, know I this. That. I should know this. <laughs> Somebody put that in the comments as well. Because I'm going to see it and go, yep, that's exactly who it's by. Yeah. Quality <laughs> jam, though. Quality yeah, oh jam. Oh my God. This is. I was like, since I was a kid, and do yep. do now when you play it out, I'm, I'm Oh, it's a banger. It's down. a banger. It's like, like that and like Sandstorm. Every time I hear that or Sandstorm, I'm just like, all right. Yep. All right, we're back. <laughs> yep. We're back. We did this. Yep. This yep. is what's happening. Yep. Hell yeah. All right. Well, we've reached the end. Zeno, thank you so, so much for joining us today. This thank was so much all. fun. Thank you all for the, for the platform, for the op- opportunity to even talk. So, oh, thank yeah. Well, much. hopefully we'll be able to get you back on for some music in the future. I um, look forward to that. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get up on out of here, y'all. This has been another exciting episode of Jimmy's Jam Box. I'm Jimmy. This is Zeno G. And we're signing off later, y'all. That's a wrap. This is not a podcast. This is a show. Keep jamming.